are these people, Aaron? Where do they come from? What uh, star yeah. system are they from? Exactly. What's their, what is their story in terms of um, why they chose to come here? Also, what was going on in their own, um, in their own system that, that brought them here? And a little bit just more about them uh, aside from us and, and, you know, what, how did that story unfold? Because I know there's a Mars connection and Mars is a really hot topic. And I, I think there's a connection there. So, well, Josh, that's a that. great question. <laughs> and I've got a, a wonderful answer for you there because that's a, it's, a, it's an amazing story. They, um, the Anunnaki that everybody has heard of, that term simply means those who came to Earth. So these beings, these reptilian beings, um, maybe 12 feet in stature, um, the elite, the elite are large, um, and they were the ones that came here. Um, but so they are from a planet called Rizik in the cradle orbit of the star Sirius B in the trinary star system of Sirius. Now, the neat thing about this, out of the billions of stars out there, this star is only like seven stars away. So it's pretty, pretty close compared to all those massive amounts of stars out there. So they're from Sirius B. And the thing is they had a king on their planet who made some sort of um, bad decision to use nuclear bombs in volcanoes to somehow do something to their atmosphere that they were trying to do. But he in, in, instead, he ended up ruining their atmosphere and they needed to heal the planet. And um, he was... Uh, he was like um, overthrown by um, Lord Anu, who is who was the king that was um, in place when they sent their teams to Earth. So Anu had sent his oldest son, uh, Lord Enki, with a crew of 50 to Earth. Um, they knew of the Earth because it was it was it had been um, chronicled in their ancient teachings, and they were actually they had actually um, the exiled king had escaped and went there or something, and they went to find him, and he's like, "Yeah, look, they, there's all this gold here, you know, and maybe I can be king again or something, you know." And they're like, "Sure, we'll talk about that later, but show us this gold," and so. They were trying to get it out of the waters and it wasn't, they weren't having much luck. And um, Enki was doing surveys of land and found that there was an abundance of gold in down in South Africa. So um, he petitioned to expand their operations and uh, the, the elite back on the home world um, okayed it. And they sent ships with a wealth of mining equipment that Lord Enki had designed himself and they set up shop down in the um, down in South Africa mining the gold ore, and they had hired their people to come here to Earth to do the work. They were the lower class. They were a lot smoother, plainer. I mean, it was they were just. It's kind of like beta, alpha, and beta. You know, they were just. Uh, you know, they weren't as beautiful. <laughs> they weren't as big and beautiful as as the elite who are big, strong, horned, just buff. And, and the, the smaller people were more of like the, the, you know, the drones, you know, the drone population or whatever, but they were the workers that were having, and they were having a hard time here as they um, set up, as they were doing their jobs and they actually um, staged a, re a rebellion. So that, um, because when they expanded Enki's younger brother and Lil arrived on the scene and um, he ended up getting to be in command of the whole earth operation. Lord Enki was not thrilled about that, but he was given um, command of the, or of the mining operations or something like that. And, and so he had a big medical laboratory down in South Africa and he was working on creating a creature that would mine gold for them. Now, this creature was not human. They um, 
creating a mammal worker was probably the last thing that they uh, were considering because these reptilians don't really particularly care for mammals. They find them to be loud, smelly, and unpredictable. So their first worker that they created to mine gold um, was, no, was known as the Lulu. And they look very much like the Slee Stack from the Land of the Lost. A reptilian appearance, big round eyes. They probably made that noise, <laughs> but uh, who knows? But um, no, the thing is, the thing is they're, they're, um, they were warm blooded. Even though they had a reptilian appearance, they were warm blooded, much like the platypus. It's um, kind of half mammal, half reptilian. So they created this creature that looked like them in the appearance, in their own image. That's where that comes from. Uh, God created man in his own image. That's where the Anunnaki created the Lulu. And they looked, you know, they were like lizard men, but like the little drone, skinny drone people. Um, but um, so they, they would kind of, they would kind of be kind of like the alien greys in a sense, like, um, sure, you know, slender, you know, non muscular, you know, kind of less assuming. Sure. And they were worker drones. And the problem with these, um, they created these creatures by um, through surrogates that they had hired. And it was an arduous process. Their lifespans were not as long as they were expected them to be. And they were incapable of breeding. That was the big problem. The Lulu could not breed. Um, yeah, so uh, they ended up so let me adding, ask you right there, because some what I think is fascinating about uh, what what's going to unfold, because I know what's going to unfold, <laughs> yes. is um, is that, that these moments that it, within the story, and, and when you're saying here, this is within the, the Sumerian text. You're not you're not going off. Oh right, yeah, no, I mean, I didn't about, make I didn't make you it didn't up. make any of this stuff up. This is in the Sumerian text. Sounds crazy. <laughs> it's and it does sound crazy and i think that is what's very fascinating that's why we're having this conversation is that mm -hmm. if people decide to go and investigate this stuff they are going to come to uh very similar conclusions they're going to say wow you know they did understand they they are talking about these planets they are talking about these beings that, right you know came and they are talking about the creating man and, and, and these different beings now in in what we see also is in these different types of mythologies not not sumerian but in these other kind of uh um you know like we hear about leprechauns and we hear about all these different creatures that right, this is where these kind of, this is where these things come from is that what you're is that what you think yeah. most of the um most of the uh races within um storylines like the hobbit actually document a series of lost human hybrid races that were created through interbreeding with the humans. The reptilians, they interbred with the humans. And now there's a number of equations that create the different, the different bloodlines of, of hybrids um, because there were two different types of female, human female in the beginning. That, that is a very big uh, differentiating factor. The, the original female was um, the pure design, and then they replaced her with a clone of the male. That was Eve. And so um, her hybrid babies were more masculine and brutish, uh, the origin of the orc race, whereas Lilith's reptilian hybrid babies were more feminine. And then you have, so you've got the creation. And that would have been like the elves, is that correct? Yes, exactly. And so um, therein lies the differentiation between those two hybrid races. Now, those were the hybrid babies of the elite interbreeding with the um, the alpha and the beta females. So when you have betas, the reptilian betas like the workers, when the they started interbreeding with mostly, they mostly had access to the bloodlines of Cain and uh, and Eve, Eve's children. Um, there were some children of Lilith that, that have obviously interbred into humanity, but um, the the betas that that interbred with humanity created the race of giants so and then um 
the dwarf race, which is also very important, wasn't necessarily created through those types of sexual interludes between alphas and betas and the cross breeding therein, they were actually created in the laboratories of the Anunnaki as a replacement for the original dark-skinned humans who probably looked a lot like, you know, dark-skinned people of today, you know, stature-wise and height-wise. They, uh, they created a much more smaller, uh, sturdy hybrid race uh, with fair skin known as the dwarves. And this, the dwarves were employed uh, they were slaves, <laughs> but uh, they were proud. Dwarves are a proud race, and they mined gold for their Anunnaki masters um, diligently, and they they were utilized with with great efficiency in obtaining the gold for the Anunnaki as a much more and and, and when you durable when you have, human worker for the and, mining and, and condition. It's amazing because think about the Hobbit story where you have these dwarves and they're mining gold and they have piles of gold. And, and what, com what comes in to exactly. take the gold over? It's a giant dragon. reptilian dragon. Yeah. That's what and, the dragon and, represents. And that's what the dragon no, represents. So, and when, when Tolkien was asked, you know, how does it feel to be the greatest fantasy writer of all time? He said, I, I didn't write fantasy. I didn't write fiction. Um, and everybody took him back. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about. I know what, what he's talking about. What, he's talking what about he real is stuff. saying is he's, he's, he's taken a different story much like king arthur and his 12 knights based off of jesus and his 12 disciples mm -hmm. and he's repackaging it into a a different you know uh um you know story but it's still the same story it's just got the same themes of the sure. original story <laughs>